Hey, my wonderful, wonderful lovelies, my beautiful people, a pleasant afternoon to you. If you have not yet made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, please feel free to do so. He's the best being ever. Certainly, that would be the best, 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 best decision you could ever make. All right, listen to me now, my beautiful people. Sometimes we see things happening to people and we question, you know, what it is that they could be doing to cause this. Sometimes it's just a part of life. Remember, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And unfortunately, we have to just pay the consequences of such. You know, but thank God for the remnant called Jesus Christ, who came, died, was buried and re resurrected. And for those who believe upon him, know him as Lord and as Savior, accept him into their soul, in their hearts and in their minds. Then they would be free from that condemnation, from that damnation of eternal death. You know, oftentimes people don't even understand the different calamities that, you know, uh, may take effect in the lives of people because of the lives they live. And they only look for the big things, big sins, you know, like adultery and, uh, you know, robbing and so on. But I'm going to read something to you that was, when I was at church today, it, it really ministered to my soul. And I said, if I can help somebody, I certainly will. And I'm going to read First John, you know, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, not the four Gospels, you know, the third, you know, you have three book of John. And I'm going to read First John chapter 3. Verses 14 to about 19, I think it is. But I'm going to read. I may not go down that far. Because if I can save each and every person that hears my voice, or for those who decide to take heed, then it certainly will make a difference. It says, We know that we have passed out of death into life. Because we love the brothers and sisters he's talking about people of the faith you know not per se the non-christians but it goes for them as well in a sense he who does not love remains in spiritual death so it does go for the unbeliever as well he who does not love remains in spiritual death everyone who hates and i'm using the amplified version because it tends to be descriptive and, and give an explanation of, of, of certain active words, verb or adverbs that are used or adjectives that may be used to describe. So it says everyone who hates, which is works against his brother. So everyone who hates, you know, works against, because if you hate, you're going to work against your brother or your sister, works against his brother in Christ. Everyone who hates work, works against his brother in Christ. This is for the believer at heart. Is a murderer that's what it says and I think the new international version version actually says murderer so if you hate your brother or your sister not by my words but by the Word of God you are a murderer you're a murderer by God's standards it says at heart a murderer by God's standards me can't blame me and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So if you hate your brother, you're a murderer, as God says, and eternal life is evaded from you. By this we know and have come to understand the depth and essence of his precious love. That he willingly laid down his life for us because he loved us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the believers. Jesus said he had, you have no friend like the friend in Jesus who lays down his life. Or there's no, you know, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't quote it correctly. You know, as a friend, I talk about a friend sticketh closer than a brother. Then the connection between a friend sometimes is far deeper than the connection between a brother to the point that that friend can even lay down his life for the individual. That's how much, how deep that love is. It's like it's, it's, a, it's like a, a big, it's a part of that, agape love. And that's the highest form of love. Remember, God sent his son, came in the flesh, sent, died, was buried and resurrected so that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. 
But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother, listen now, listen to this now, hmm? listen to me. But whoever has the world's goods, adequate resources, whether it's cash or kind, cash or kind, and sees his brother or sister, basically, when it says his brother, you notice it's also the feminine um, aspect of it as well. Sees his brother in need, but has no compassion for him. How does the love of God live in him? So somebody comes to you in need. Let us say somebody that looks like me will look well all put together because maybe if the person really looks indigent and impoverished, they might say, okay, because a person looks in need. But somebody who looks like me and I could be in need, could be of various reasons as to why I'm in need. They come to you for help but because of your perception of me, because of your hate towards me, or because of your own mean state or mean streak, you turn your back on me. The Bible says, but whoever has the world's goods, so you have money or wealthy, or you, you know, next to wealthy, rich. You have cash, you have kind, and you see your brother. That it didn't even talk about your brother came and asked. It says you see your brother in need. You know that God can actually move upon somebody's heart to tell them that somebody is in need. There was a lady who decided that she was going to church. Looks nice. Probably like how I would look put together and all of that. And she didn't, it was her last money. Things were tough for her. It doesn't, people don't have to wear old clothes and look poverty stricken to show that they are in, they're struggling. That's just probably not their persona. And people could have given them things before. They could have had things before that they wear and look good. And she just didn't know how she was going to go home. And God moved up on a young man's heart. And when he looked and looked at the woman, he tussled and, you know, really battled with God because it's almost like saying, God, that lady, I look mean. And even if, I'm God, how is she going to take it? You know, I mean, a whole host of things. But I don't think she's in need. Or even if she's in need, how is she going to take this? And the Spirit of God would not stop, in, you know, impressing upon him. And he couldn't take it, so he had to go to her. He said, Miss, please don't take this anyway. But I feel the Lord is leading me to give you such and such an amount of money. When he said those words to her, she bawled like a baby. She bawled as though somebody died. Because she said to the man, you wouldn't know how I was wondering and fretting how I would have gotten home. I didn't even have money for gas. Yes, I think it was something like that she needed. And I feel sometimes God impress upon your hearts, but because of your perception like that young man, or because you're mean, because a person could even look poor and pauperized, indigent, really impoverished, and you just decide to be mean. I was told of a story like that. The woman had money, I don't know if she was rich, really wealthy or whatever. Had a lot of tin things and somebody said well instead of you have a lot you know there are people in need and you don't really use it that often can you give some to people and she said no you know god uh, somebody said god did or a load to happen the tin start bursting up it burst open spoil all of them spoil you see when you have money and somebody's in need and they reach out to you tell them no you will end up spending more money mark my words on that i've seen it happen to people I've seen it happening. It's not too good to give people. It doesn't matter if somebody comes to you for help and you can help you help. I guarantee you will lose it more. My pastor used to preach a message. If you have sand like this and you open up your hand, you will have more sand. But when you go like this and flick open your hand, maybe at least a little bit of sand, if any, remains in your hand. Be free with money and good things. Things that you would want for yourselves. The Bible says you do not have the love of God if you have resources and money and things and you don't help. Don't judge anybody by any cover. Whether they all look tear up, tear up. They look shoddy or shabby or they look good like Lisa Hannah, beautiful. And, and they come to you for help. Help them if you can. Help them if you can. Help them if you can. Don't worry about what is what. Don't worry about unless God really moves and says, mm -mm, don't go there because that's general or trickster or whatever. Outside of that, help. It says, little children, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word or tongue, giving lip service to compassion. But I will pray for you. Stop the rubbish. Nothing is wrong with that, but give if you can. But in action and in truth, in practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. And by this we will know without a doubt that you are of the truth, which is Jesus. You're of Jesus when it says you're of the truth. So, it's either you're a murderer or a savior, so to speak. Guys, you know what to do with your TikTok and YouTube. Subscribe.